he's been dominating, absolutely dominating the last three weeks. And and this season for a lot of it, he's been dominating. It's 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 you know it's funny that a lot of people didn't want this guy and uh, were questioning the pick and all this stuff and uh, oh Ed Oliver's better and all this stuff and we're kind of getting on people like me who really backed them. But the film did not lie in Bama. I did a show on him. His technique is ridiculous. It is really really good and he's starting to come into the technique where he's getting more confident and the game is slowing down for him a little bit. The first year, again ankle injury early in the season seemed like he was affecting him all year he was leaning a lot into his hands he wasn't using his technique a lot it looked like he was swimming a little bit where now he's just starting to play um and it's really impressive again in this play obviously the left guard picks him up good timing with the with the left arm um into the into the shoulder pad jolts him back their hands are their hands are mat are, are are matched. I'm not sure if he meant to get this on the right shoulder. He probably did. That happens a lot when guys both shoot their hands at the same time. They come into contact. Williams controls the hand, rips it. Again, power to push him back. Gets his hips on an even plane. Connects the feet and the hands. Step through, cross the feet, rip. So you don't want to do this too early. You'll see guys like this, they'll be here and then they'll try to rip, but then guys can, can shuffle and stay in front of you. You want to start to throw, throw rips and things like that as you're clearing the hips, because as you're clearing the hips, you know, um, that's, when you're going to be able to work your hips past theirs and the rips can be able to set it and you're going to be able to bend. If you send it, if you set it too early, um, typically you're going to fail. So good job right there. Extending again, hand on extension then the left foot and the left hand are connected step through rip through really good job one two and the only reason he trips here is because he, he, he gets his foot stepped on or he steps on the heel of this tight end um and he falls down but really good rep he just beat the crap out of the left guard right there really really quick um moving on i got a, i got a decent not not like a ton but i got like six more plays of him or something like that so killed it this game Okay. Q hit. Uh, he is the four eye right here. Yeah, this is just effort. Um, obviously the 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 Raiders, um, like a like a lead toss um, away from him to the to the boundary side. Q is on the back side here. He gets cut. Blo- he gets cut, but he uh, does a good job shoving the guy into the ground. That's what you want to do with cut blocks. Shove him into the ground. Jump over him. So that's all. All pretty normal. I just absolutely love the effort. See a lot of guys on this backside are slowing down. You know, and Q continues to run and lays a huge shot on this, uh, on the running back. Bang, he freaking launches him. <laughs> launches him. And, and I noticed on the ga- this on the game view, I was like, holy shit, you can see Q coming right here. Love the effort, love the hit. Just wanted to highlight that. Not much to break down, but um, you always got to highlight effort. Effort it matters. Defensive linemen, too, be careful. Some defensive linemen do play a couple snaps in a row, and defensive linemen, in my opinion, is the most tiring position in the NFL. Um, people might say, oh, well, what about receiver or corner? Yeah, sure, if you're passing the ball a thousand times. But whether, whatever the play is for the defensive linemen, whether it be pass or run, they have to play it like a like a like they want to get to the quarterback or they're going to stack and two gap or whatever they're doing. Um, we're even offensive linemen, tough position. But if you know it's going to be a, a you know a, a screen play or a quick slant, you know bubble screen, tunnel screen, whatever it is, shield screen, um, you could take the playoff halfway where the defensive linemen really can't. So defensive linemen, in my opinion, is definitely the most tiring position in the NFL. That's my opinion, and I think it's. I don't see how you can combat that. Um, again, receivers can take a playoff run play. You can block, but if it's going completely away from you, guys will take off a play. Corner, same thing. Um, guys don't play ball so well every single play. They just don't. So be careful. With if you see a, a, a defensive lineman looking like they're a little bit gassed and they're not giving full effort, that happens because they get tired. Um, that's what you hear about, like guys who run the the, the up tempo offense is tiring out the defense. The defense line is absolutely gassed. That's when they start playing patty cake with guys. So there's a difference between Quinn Williams being tired for a play. Cause I've seen it be tired for a play, and there's a difference between that and 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 Muhammad Wilkerson taking plays off consistently. There's just be again, be careful. Um, Q quarterback hit right here. The two I. 
again, what happens? Quick drop, ball out. But what does Q do? Step up field. Obviously, the right guard slides down to take him. Steps down to take him. He's stepping inside, so he's going to try to take the outside. Obviously, this is a little bit tighter of a gap, so he's going to shoot. He's going to shoot the B. Shoots the B. Um, he needs to be improved a little bit with the accuracy of his hands. Sometimes he does. He does miss with his hands. Or he's a little bit too early with his hands. He anticipates this punch. Tries to tries to uh, chop it away, swipe it away. Looks like he misses. He gets caught in the shoulder. Q. Then lands his hands inside. Shoves him backwards. Now his momentum is going backwards with his hips outside. So what is he going to do? Now he's in an angle inside. Angles inside. Defeats the right arm with his with his left arm. Hit. Sends Carn to the turf again. Just, just again. Was it was it perfect? Did he miss right there? Yes. Did he get caught a little bit right here? Um, yes. But then he transitioned right into a bull. Throws him backwards. Power like Q. In terms of athleticism, he's a decent. Uh, I think he's a decently athletic guy. Lateral, he's okay. Um, straight line athlete, speed. I think he's pretty damn good. Um, but his power and like his like because he's kind of he's kind of like he's a uh, more stout. He's a he's a strong guy. If he if he gets his hands into, he starts driving. He's a strong guy. Hands into him, bowls him, finds the alley to, to car, hits him. But again, the uh, the ball is out pretty quick. Uh, Guidry gets uh, beat. Ooh, good job right there by uh this is a good job by Hewitt right here. Drag route. Who was playing coverage right there? 30 38. Is that Lamar Jackson? Good job by uh him getting tight to him too, just in case there is mesh. And obviously with him being five yards in launch scrimmage, they call this like a wall technique. Just just so people know. Uh, I do try to bring up like different examples, different plays. Like sometimes I just run through the film and don't really talk about some of the technical terms. But a, he's he's a, he's a wall technique. He doesn't want anybody to cross his face. And if they do, he's in a he's in a launch or within five yards. So good job walling, rocks him. But again, the ball is out quick. Uh, moving on. Twenty one. Q rush. Again, uh, their center is, is it Hudson? Yeah, I think Hudson. He's one of the best um, centers in the league. Snaps the ball again. A little bit of a little, there's a blitz right here, so he's an angle inside. He's an angle um, to the outside a little bit, and they're going to blitz the B gap with Ashton Davis. Is that Ashton Davis? Yeah, Ashton Davis. Good job by that running back and blitz pickup. Um, but he's gonna he's gonna attack this gap. He obviously doesn't want to get too clogged up right there. Shoots his hands a little bit early in terms of the, the center. Q, he's gonna start to do a really, really good job of controlling the elbows, forking, you know, lifting their hands upwards, call it forking, controls the elbow, forks it upwards, and then he pairs that. Uh, so this is pretty. I can't tell where the right hand is. I wish I could tell. Maybe it's on the shoulder. Or trying to control the arm, but I love the fact that he controls the elbow again. To the, you want to defeat the arms, you want to defeat the hands. It's all about the hands and the hips and the feet. There's a lot of stuff, but the hands are important. Pushes this up while he steps through. Rip. Fork. Step through. Rip. The feet and the hands are paired up right there. Rip. And then th and then uh, holds that rip, and it almost acts like a chicken, like a chicken wing. To, to again, to guard your body, um, you want to duck and chicken wing. And so you're not really going to be able to shoot through that arm and, and get over to his chest to control it, to try to uh, last this effort to, to save the play. Power, and then look at this bend in power. It, is it is it the bend of Brian Burns who, who looks like a nat, uh, one of those freaking those bikes that turns the corners? No, but for th this working through a center's contact, the ankle flexion. The angle is, is important. And again, ankle flexion is, is important because if your ankle can't turn to the ground, it'd be flat on the ground while your ankle, it's basically if, you're, if, if, if my hand was your, was your leg 
or your your ankle. And if your foot can't maintain contact on the ground, you're not going and, 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 and they always stay straight. If you don't have that flexibility in your ankle, you're not going to be able to maintain your balance and your bending. So a lot of guys, if they don't have that ankle flexion, that flexibility in their ankles are going to slip because they their their feet start to go sideways and they're not having full contact with the ground. Instead of guys who have that flexibility and they can have their 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 foot and their ankle at different um uh, different angles. So you see that some of that right there turns a corner, gets the pressure on car. Great play. Um, okay, four more plays of him left. 32, 34, Ash and Davis and Lowry. Who's not a 32? Wasn't Bush? What was that safety? But was it a Bush? Not no, obviously not Devin Bush. Someone with a J. Who was that? I feel like someone with a J. 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 Bush. Josh? No, Josh Bush. Josh Bush. I'm googling that. This is my podcast. Damn it, Josh Bush, Jets. Yeah, number thirty-two. Nice. I like the I like the random recognition or um, not recognition. Wow, I'm blanking on the words now. There's too much thoughts going on in my mind. Recollection, recollection. That's the word I'm looking for. Of random ass numbers. Like who remembers Josh Bush? Um, okay, zero tech. Sorry, that was like that just happens sometimes. They're running this this uh, the stunt with the with the linebacker. And him. So again, he wants to he he wants to attract the center, attract his attention. He's going to do that. Um, and obviously the he's gonna he's gonna get picked by the uh um he's gonna get picked by the linebacker and he's gonna loop around it. Um obviously if they were studying inside, you'd hope that the linebacker would carry the right guard into the center and then he would loop around the you know the into the B gap. It's not what happens. So a lot of people said, Oh, this is a triple team. If you count the contact by everybody, and again, it's not like three people automatically just went and blocked Q. So I hate the word triple team. Like I, I like to say, like he faced three different blockers on a play. Triple team is completely different. Like a, du- a true double team is one guy getting locked down by two guys. A combo block is more of a double team. But if you're beating one guy to angle off into another guy and like loops and stuff like that, it's not really a triple team. So uh, I don't like that wording. But again, comes off the ball, defeats the hands of number sixty-one, keeps himself clear. You could see that this. Uh, Number 71 hit, throws his drag hand, hits Q, checks him, whatever you want to call it. He controls that hand right on that one. So he defeats the, he defeats the center's hands, the, the, the left guard's hands. Okay, you can see him controlling that, that arm so it doesn't, it doesn't hit him in the chest. Tries to tightly loop inside. The running back goes to pick him up. Gets low, hands inside. Throws the running back back. Now the, the right guard comes to pick him up. Q gets popped by him, but is able, able to maintain his balance and continue on his way to the quarterback. The running back tries to come back and block him again. Q angles outside of him. Club gets right behind him again. Tracks down Carr. So he took on four different blocks there really quickly. Obviously, it was partial blocks of these two guys, but really good job defeating the hands, controlling the right hand of him, looping inside, jolting the running back back. Um, getting jolted by the right guard, but staying on his track to the to the quarterback, seeing the running back's angle, shooting outside of him while clubbing him. But now, uh, wow, well, you know, I say all that, but now let's watch it in full speed. Defeats two, loops inside, defeats the running back, <laughs> like sack. Like the, it, it does get better than that. Cause some of the plays I showed last week of like him, like even the other plays like controlling the elbow while stepping through with the rip, like that stuff's more impressive to me. That was more just like the want to. Um, good technique too, like controlling multiple guys at once. Really, really good. That was that was really impressive, obviously.